Hey, we got a craft fair coming up at a farm, so I'm going to make some bottle openers. Today's video is going to be a blend of traditional woodworking, uh, easy project bottle openers, so definitely stick around just for the woodworking, but we're also going to feature the laser a little bit. You can skip over that section if it's not your thing, but we're going to show you what it looks like in the software to kind of dial in your settings. So first I'm going to take this mahogany board over to the jointer, going to get one edge and one face of it flat for the planer. Jointed face down, we're going through the planer. Get that other face nice and milled up. So this is African mahogany, if you're wondering. It's not the super dense type of mahogany. It is the lighter, both physically and, uh, physically again, I guess, like visibly. So weight and how it looks, it's lighter than South American or like true mahogany. So I gotta get the fence on the table saw here. We're outside cutting to save on sawdust cleanup time because my saw is so small it doesn't even have a proper dust port. So we're gonna take this over, put that jointed edge against the fence and get a nice new edge on the other side with the table saw. Uh, I'm just cranking this in and running it through again because I didn't get all of it in the first go. And one more time for good measure. I ought to do it. All right, so I'm going to bring this board over to the workbench now that it's squared up on four sides, and I am going to measure it. I haven't actually done that yet. Uh, it's about 22 inches, so I figure I'll get three seven-ish inch bottle openers out of it. So I'm, I'm taking a minute just to kind of mark that out and make sure that in reality that's going to look good, and it's going to leave me space not only for the hardware that i got to put on for the bottle opener, but also a cool engraving so that we can go for a higher price point when we try to sell these at the craft fair. So here I am just kind of fiddling with the hardware, um, bearing in mind that I'm also going to have to pre-drill a hole on the top and the bottom of this so that it can be mounted to a wall, um, preferably a stud. So... Here we go, just taking my speed square, getting some lines on the board, um, kind of messing with it. So everything looks good. So I'm gonna spend a moment just uh, squaring up this miter saw. I didn't get clean cuts on it last time and I was a little suspicious that maybe it had come out of square. Um, it was, turns out, by a couple degrees. So bring that board over. I'm not worried about precision too much on this. There's no actual reason they all need to be the same size, but just for the sake of time in the future, I'll probably set up a stop block, um, especially when I go to, this is kind of a test batch, you know, make sure these look good. I'm probably gonna run a larger batch of these. That would be worth setting up a stop block at seven inches. They'll all be the same exact size. So I'm just gonna take some time. Uh, these came out pretty clean off my planer actually. So just, I have 220 on this sanding pad and I'm just hitting them real quick. A lot easier to hit them now than when they got all the hardware on them. So I took a combination square here and got it close to center. I just kind of eyed it. So now I'm flipping it back and forth, making two marks. And as long as they're close enough, your eye will be good enough to get that pretty much dead center from there. So just taking time to do that on each board. After that, you'll see that I flip and come in from the end of the board, uh, Again, I just kind of went by eye here to see what looked good. And where the middle of those first two marks meets this line is going to be exactly where I drill and countersink a nice hole so that people can put two screws through this and mount it wherever they want. So I'll take a minute to mark all these up and then we'll be ready to head to the drill press. One last thing, got to add a little shape for the bottle opener. That's going to help me out on the laser side of things, uh, just so that when I'm lining up an image, I know exactly where that thing ends, so I know how much space I have to work with. You see, I'm going to use the camera on my X-Tool M1 laser engraver to line this up, no problem. So this is the drill bit that I'm going to use to countersink and pre-drill the holes that will mount this to the wall. So that's what they look like when they're done. I missed the footage of the drill press, nothing too exciting, just making sure you didn't go too deep on them. Um, so yeah, looking good. Over the laser, I got an image on the internet that I like. Um, gonna test it out, see if it's popular at this fair. 
So I put this underneath the laser and it turns out that it's going to be a little too thick to keep my laser at the current setting. I'm going to have to take that honeycomb tray out of the top and I'm going to have to put it at the first setting beneath. Um, I bought the honeycomb riser base accessory kit, so that's what I'm putting to, putting to work here because this piece is too thick. So X-Tool includes this little measurement tool and you basically are supposed to measure to the top of the laser module unit. You can see this ruler doesn't reach and that means that this is actually too far away now. So the thickness of this piece, I am sort of caught between two settings of the laser. So I'm putting a spacer block underneath. Don't do that if you're gonna cut, right? Cause the laser, once it gets through the first piece and into the second, you can start a fire in between the two layers. You don't want that. But for engraving, this is fine. So here's the image that I picked up. Um, I am going to mess around with it, make sure my settings look good. I always put the power to 100 and then I mess with the speed from there. Uh, I have a pretty good idea of what power this is going to take to look good just because I've run the laser quite a bit now. So I'm actually using that offcut of mahogany from earlier. This little extra piece that came off the miter saw is going to be my test piece because it's the same thickness, same material. So laser made short work of that engraving. Obviously that was uh, sped up, but this is starting to look pretty good. Looks like it's going to be an easy image to dial in. Already looks good. Uh, the only thing I could use, I think, is a little more texture on it to make the engraving more impressive. Um, so I've put my first bottle opener into the laser and I'm starting to reposition this image. That little line that I drew myself earlier, that curved line where the bottle opener ends, I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's right above the image right now. It's really helping me know exactly how much space I have to work with so I can get this image as big as possible. All right, I'm going to turn down the speed just a little bit, and that's going to give it more power because the laser head at the same power is going to spend more time in any given spot. I'm going to hit the play button, and this should turn out pretty well. Uh, filming this laser is tough because it's completely enclosed. It's very safe, so I'm actually filming through a piece of acrylic, uh, tinted acrylic. So sorry for the quality there, but you get the idea. Laser's making passes back and forth. So let's see what we got. All right, looks good again, no scorch or anything. So I'm gonna tilt this a little bit so you can see, probably can't, but um, it is a little deeper than the last engraving. So as you run your thumb over it, it has a really nice texture that I think is gonna impress people at a craft fair. So another cool thing about this laser, the software is pretty good, XCS. Um, X tool creative space. I'll probably do a whole video on that software and like the basics, maybe next. Let me know if you want to see that. But it's really easy to copy paste an image, uh, center it with the camera. There's some tips to doing that. But once everything runs smooth, like you can do it pretty, pretty quickly. So these two look great. Gonna go ahead and start to mark where these bottle openers should go exactly. We're going to get those pre-drilled for so that later, after we have the finish on and everything, uh, we can very easily get these in. We don't want them to put up a fight. We want to minimize the risk of smacking the workpiece after we do all the finish. So using that same bit from earlier, actually, and just not going all the way through the workpiece, not even going far enough for the little pre-drill part of it to make an impact. Um, really, we just want to make it so the wood won't split later on. So there you go, everything's all prepped. So it's time to run over to the router and put some fancy trim on these. If you have a router um, and a router table, don't even need the table. Table makes it a little safer, I think, but basically a router is gonna let you put fancy trim work on things uh, very quickly. And it just kind of separates a professional looking workpiece from an amateur looking workpiece with probably the littlest effort. So we're gonna run everything through. I'm actually doing this in one pass. Um, if I wanted any deeper of a chamfer on the edge, I would do it in two passes, I think. I'm gonna spend a little bit of time sanding those at a high grit. I'm using 220 here. Uh, you don't wanna take anything away from the shape of the chamfer. You just wanna take that roughness off. Just knock those wood fibers down real quick. We put a nice bold engraving on here. So we got a little bit of room to sand the top of it as our last step before putting the finish on. So I'm doing that quick at 220, making sure I get pencil marks that are gonna be visible off. And it's time to hit these with finish. I'm gonna be using Watco spray lacquer. This is satin. Uh, we're gonna hit it with one coat and then a second coat really quickly because it's probably gonna drink that coat. 
and then probably two more coats at least after that, depending on how they look. I'm not going to sand in between layers, um, but I am going to rub the finish out after, which is its own process that completely transforms it. Uh, basically, after everything's dry, you want to take a brown paper bag and buff the heck out of it. You can feel and see when you need to keep buffing. So that's the process. Uh, maybe we'll do that in detail more in the future, but these are looking real shiny. They have a really nice smooth feel to them, and they have a top coat that's going to protect them from bottle caps, uh, drunks smacking their bottles into it, you know, all sorts of things. So it's really easy to install this hardware at this point. Uh, it came with these screws, and I'm choosing to hand tighten them in because... It really doesn't take that long, and I just want to minimize the chance of, you know, maybe the drill slipping off the top of the screw and smacking into the workpiece, you know? That's not going to happen if I just use the screwdriver here. But if you're doing a run of like 30 of these, you better have a good wrist muscle, or you're going to build one. Well, guys, thank you very much for watching. Let me know if you think these are going to sell at the craft fair. I have a good feeling they will. I think I'm going to do a bigger batch, maybe a different image, maybe a blend of images, but I really like this style. Looks good. Thanks for watching.